Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. E to the x is continuous. Now, let's first remind ourselves what e to the x is. If we recall, e to the x is the limit of 1 plus x over n to the power of n for every real number x. And from there, we prove three properties of the exponential function, which are the following. So these. Now, if we consider any real number x less than 1, well, we know that this inequality works for every real number. So in particular, it must work for the negative of x. So substituting this for negative x, we have this. And since x is less than 1, we have 1 minus x is greater than 0. But then, if we take this inequality and multiply both sides by e to the x, well, we know that e to the x is positive, so the sign of the inequality remains the same. But then, we can divide both sides of this inequality by 1 minus x, and the sign of the inequality remains the same. So we get this, but we know that the left-hand side is just 1 over 1 minus x, the right-hand side is just e to the x. So we see that e to the x is less than or equal to 1 over 1 minus x. But again, by this fact, we know that e to the x is also greater than or equal to 1 plus x. So what we have shown here is, given any real number x less than 1, we have that e to the x lies between 1 plus x and 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, so now, let's get into proving this theorem. Well, to say that this function is continuous means that this function is continuous at every real number. So to start with the proof, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number, c. From here, the whole goal is to prove that e to the x is continuous at c. So what does it mean for e to the x to be continuous at c? It means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all real numbers x, if absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then absolute value of e to the x minus e to the c is less than epsilon. Now, alternatively, this is the same thing as this. So if x minus c lies between negative delta and positive delta, then e to the x minus e to the c lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. So now, to prove e to the x is continuous at c, what that means is we want to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this statement is true. Now, let's pretend as though we've already figured out what to choose delta to be. With this value of delta, we want to show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every real number x, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number x. With this real number x, we want to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that x minus c lies between negative delta and positive delta. The whole goal from here is to show that e to the x minus e to the c lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. And in the process of showing this, we're going to figure out what we should define delta to be. Now we're going to end up defining delta so that delta is the smallest element in a list of positive numbers. Right? So that's how we're going to define it. Now, let's re-express e to the x minus e to the c in a different way. Notice we have the following. e to the x minus e to the c is equal to this. So to show that e to the x minus e to the c lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon, it suffices to show that this guy lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. Now, to start out, we're going to restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to 1. Because if we do that, 
then x minus c is less than delta, which is less than or equal to 1. So x minus c is less than 1, and so we can apply this fact to x minus c. I'm going to call this fact star, just for reference. So substituting x for x minus c, we get this. But then let's convert e to the x minus c into this. To do that, all we have to do is subtract all three sides by 1, and then multiply all three sides by e to the c. If we do that, we get this. So now, remember, we want to make the sky between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. And in the process of doing so, we're going to figure out how we should restrict delta. Well, first, looking at the left-hand side, we want to make the left-hand side greater than negative epsilon. Well, to do that, first notice, x minus c is greater than negative delta. So this quantity must be greater than negative delta e to the c. And so to make this guy greater than negative epsilon, all we have to do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over e to the c. Because with this restriction, if we take this inequality and multiply both sides by negative e to the c, we get this. And this is just equal to negative epsilon. So this guy is greater than or equal to negative epsilon. So that takes care of the left-hand side. Now let's deal with the right-hand side. Well, if we combine these two guys into a single fraction, we get this. And remember, x minus c is less than 1. So certainly the denominator is positive. So since x minus c is less than delta, this quantity must be less than this guy. But then, how do we deal with the denominator? All we have to do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to, say, 1 half. Because if delta is less than or equal to 1 half, we have x minus c is less than 1 half. But how does this help us deal with the denominator? Well, if we negate both sides, we get this. If we add 1 both sides, we get this. But then if we take the reciprocal of both sides, that'll flip the sign of the inequality, and we get this. So then we just multiply both sides of this inequality by delta e to the c, and we get this. So this tells us that this quantity is less than 2 delta e to the c. And so now... To make this guy less than epsilon, all we have to do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 2e to the c. Because with delta less than or equal to epsilon over 2e to the c, we have that this guy is less than or equal to this guy, but then this just simplifies down to epsilon. So, what have we done here? We have that this guy lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. But remember, this guy is equal to e to the x minus e to the c. So what we've really shown here is that e to the x minus e to the c lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So we have arrived at this. And with this choice of delta, we are able to make this argument and prove this statement. So, since we have proven the statement, this means we have proven that this function is continuous at C. And since C was arbitrary, we have shown that the exponential function is continuous at every real number C. So, the exponential function is continuous. And so this completes the proof. And we can also 
define delta so that delta is the smaller of just these two values, right? Because one half is less than one, epsilon over two e to the c is less than epsilon over e to the c. Right? And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.